MMA is a full contact combat sport encompassing both striking and grappling techniques. It's a combination of disciplines such as judo, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai and boxing. This is mixed martial arts and this is Cage Warriors. After a mixed start in MMA, Irishman Neil Seary crowned his run of good form by winning the Cage Warriors flyweight title back in June, beating Mikhail Salander. His first challenger, American Ulysses Gomez, fresh from his run in the UFC, is looking to re-establish himself as one of the top flyweights in the world and sees this Cage Warriors title as the perfect way to do it. Can the older champion retain in his first offence and halt the young challenger's comeback? going out there to the internet, my game on him. But I'm just going to keep marching forward, and trying to take his head off constantly. I ain't going to stop. I mean, I've been telling people for years that I'm one of the best fighters in the world. I'm 125, you know? And me being in the young game, that belt is going to solidify what I've been saying for a long time. My name is Ulysses Gomez. Um, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. I represent Cobra Kai Jiu Jitsu and Gil Martinez Boxing. In high school, I was, you know, five foot three, 110 pounds, maybe 120 soaking wet, you know? And um, so I used to like, like love the UFC, watch all the time. I used to tell people they used to fight in the UFC. Uh, like, I was like, oh, that maybe be a UFC fighter, that kind of stuff. I loved MMA. And uh, finally, after high school, uh, I graduated and I figured, you know, I'm not really doing anything else with my life. You know, I might as well, you know, see what this MMA thing's about. One of 
my favorite quotes is like, uh, the biggest mistake a white belt makes is he thinks he knows everything. But on the flip side, the biggest mistake a black belt makes is he thinks he knows everything, you know? <laughs> so when I first started training, I was like, I don't know, man, there's a lot of things that I need to, need to get good at before I even think about it, you know? So I kind of like, got pretty good at jiu-jitsu, you know, pretty quick, you know, and I started picking up boxing, and I did pretty good at boxing. Then I started doing pancreation, which is like amateur MMA. Um, and I got pretty good at that, and I won, I won a, a gold medal in the, in the FILA Games in 2007. There I was like, all right, I was like, you know, maybe it's time to actually, you know, do the MMA thing. My brother plays, uh, he plays professional soccer. He plays for the uh, U.S. men's national team. He also plays uh, this club team in Mexico, uh, Mexico called uh, Los Cholos, um, and. Uh, you know, uh, I always make a joke as me being Mexican, it's either you fight, you play soccer, you do construction, you know what I mean? I don't like running, so that kind of rolled out soccer, and, uh, and I don't like yard work, so that kind of rolled out construction, so I said, screw it, got into fighting, you know? Um, I think at first, you know, my, my, my mom was more hesitant than my dad was, you know? You know, that she doesn't want to see her baby get, you know, get in a fight and get beat up, you know? Um, but, you know, they see that, uh, that I take this very seriously, you know? And I'm, I'm pretty good at it too, you know, so that kind of helps. I got beat up pretty good in sparring. They put it on me, you know, they, they don't care if uh, that I'm a two-time world champion, they used to fight in the UFC and this, this, and that. If anything, that's a target on my back, you know. These kids are, they, you know, they're trying to pull me, pull me out, you know. And I think that's, that's a good thing, that's kind of what I need, you know. Then came to the gym with me, which is some people think it's a distraction, you know, you know, bringing your, your kids and all that. But um, I, I like to have my son there so he can get used to to, um, to be in the gym because that's where you know I'm for the most part spend the rest of my life, and I think so is he, you know. And on top of that, you know, um, I want him to realize that when he does watch a fight of me, it's, it's that I choose to be there. It's not like I'm forced to do it. And ultimately, you know, it's um, you know seeing him. him uh, any mess, you know, laughing, that kind of stuff. It motivates me, you know, it reminds me, you know, that, you know, why I do stuff, you know. Yay! Oh, that's a good picture! Yeah, look. <laughs> Thank you! Look, El Cucuy. El Cucuy, look. <laughs> All right. Say trick or treat. Thank you. High five. The hardest part for me is sacrificing time for my family. Um, but also, that's also the most motivating thing. You know, people ask me, like, they compare, they always want to compare me and my brother. Um, he's 30, I'm 30. He's 31 and I'm 30. And they, you know, they say, um, you know, we'll, he always, he swears that my sport is harder than his sport. And I completely disagree. The soccer lifestyle is way harder than, than, than fighting because, you know, I take, you know, seven, eight weeks out of my life, you know. Yes, I sacrifice time with, you know, with my, with my wife and my kids and all that, you know, um, and dieting, which kind of sucks, you know. But um, at the end of the day, I come home, you know, to my family, I see them, you know, all the time. Um, my brother plays professional soccer, you know, he's in and out of cities. You know, he, you know, he has a girlfriend, you know, but he, you know, he lives in Mexico. He very, very rarely gets to see my parents, you know, and us, you know, so, um, you know, me stepping in the cage, you know, and getting hit in the mouth uh, isn't nearly as bad as not being able to see your family, in my opinion, you know. I had two fights in the UFC. Uh, first fight was John Moraga. Um, short notice fight, you know, uh, learned a lesson on that one. Don't ever take a short notice fight. Um, he got me pretty good. Then after that, I fought Phil Harris, um, who fought Neil Siri. Uh, Phil beat Neil. Um, I thought I beat Phil. Uh, the judges, you know, kind of had a, a difference of opinions with me, you know. Um, and then uh, I got released by the UFC, which was, you know, pretty devastating. I think with any fighter, you know, uh, coming off two straight losses, you know, and uh, even though it was in the, you know, the biggest organization in the world, you know, you know, you have your doubts, like, you know, do I still want to fight, you know. Um, and then uh, it's funny because um, a couple years before that, I was talking to my brother. It was 2009 in uh, Christmas. 
and he kind of went to the same. I think he just got released from from uh, the Kansas City Wizards in MLS. He said that maybe he was going to quit soccer and he was going to just start uh, start coaching. And I was like, hey man, I was like, you know, your body's young, you know, that you're not hurt, you know, and you're very talented. I was like, maybe you should kind of, you know, stay with it. And then uh, he stuck with it. He got signed by this team in Mexico, and then he ended up winning the scoring title, like the first American ever win a scoring title in a foreign league, you know. Then he ended up, you know, getting on the World Cup team, which is like from six months not having a job to being on the World Cup team, one of the World Cup only takes 23 players, so one of the best 23 players in America, you know. Yeah, so, uh, he, you know, he didn't quit, you know. And then after I got released by the UFC, I was talking to him, kind of like saying, yeah, you know, I don't know if I, this is for me, you know. And he kind of laughed. He's like, man, he's like, do you remember? When you gave me that advice, I was like, yeah, he's just like, now it's my turn, you know, and pretty much everything that I said to him, he said the same, same as that thing to me, you know. Uh, I'm young, I'm not hurt, you know, I'm very talented, you know, and um, pretty much just go to your body gives out. Your winner and now the first CWFC flyweight champion of the world. Nia to tap Obviously, I walk full time. I start walk every morning at half six. I finish at half two. I've walked since I was 15. I walked in a slot, the house killing pigs when I was 15. I don't really have much ed education to tell the truth, but it, I think it was from, from the word go that the walking mentality was just in me to now, like that I, I can't sit around with anyone. You cannot sit around that I need to get out and I just get down to the gym, I go to work. Even if someone said to me, here, listen, you're gonna make a contract, or you're gonna make a few quid out of this for you, you might be able to lose work. Or leave work, I wouldn't leave work. It's exactly just over 5K home. I'll run home there get the first workout done. After that, I have to look after, obviously, the kids, of three active kids. We try and um, juggle them between the training. Sometimes it gets really hard, but we just get through it. Sorry, I'm I can't cook for shit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I was up at eight last night cooking to dinner, it's cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> In the night time we head down and we'll do either jiu-jitsu, boxing, wrestling, whatever is on during the week for whatever night, you know. We wouldn't give it up for the world. I've done a lot of sports since I was young, you know. I've constantly jumped from more or less club to club, from hurling to football to anything that was active to keep me going. But then um, I ventured on down is the kickboxing. I was originally a kickboxing club, so I went down and um, I done a bit of the kickboxing, but they introduced a bit of grappling to it, you know. It just came around nine years ago, I said, do you want to fight? And of course, I said, like, there's no point in training sometimes if uh, you're not going to fight, you know. So I jumped straight in. Seeing back there was it was sometimes non-existent to tell you the truth, you know. Ireland didn't have what they have now, like they, we didn't have strength and conditioning, we didn't have ret wrestling coaches, the jiu-jitsu people around, there was only a certain few around that were actually really good at the time, you know. The likes of going down and doing a boxing class or a wrestling class or a jiu-jitsu class, <laughs> they honestly didn't have stuff like that, you know, so I was behind the game from the wood go. Um, my first flyweight fight was against Phil Harris. Billy, yes, he's in now in the UFC. We went three rounds with him, and it was, um, it was a decision went to Phil. 
but it was just one of them things, you know, it could have went either way, we went Phil's way in the night. After that, we switched to um, the Cage Warriors. I was a fight then, I think it was against Nico, Nico Grancha. And in fairness, he was a really, really tricky fighter, you know, <laughs> really flashy kicks. And they're exchanging blow for blow here, Josh. I knocked him out in the fourth, or the second round, I think it was, you know. He can smell a finish, and that oh, might just be it. Another big right hand has landed square on the chin. After that, I think it was um, Sisenkov. <laughs> it was as disappointing as, as fuck as he'd say. Oh, rolling for an e-bar from Straight the bottom. Away, and oh, that's oh. Well, it's just one of them things. It's the name of the game, that when you're going in there, your fight could go 15 minutes or could go 15 seconds. That's just the way it goes, you know. But the same against Paul Merlin. I was delighted that it won, but coming away from the fight, you get that feeling that you haven't been in a fight because it's over so, it's so quick. Paul was on the end of what, what happened to me, you know, and it's, I know how he feels, you know, it's sickening. Yeah, to get the cage where he's happening was, it was, it was just one of them things that topped off an MMA career, you know. It was, uh, it, was, it was one of the toughest fights just, uh, instead of, that I had. The man kicked like a mule. I've never ever been kicked as hard in my life off someone around the same size. Solanda had me in head and arm. There's not many people down the gym that can finish me in head and arms. I usually stick it out. Listen, I'm gonna go to sleep before they tap the ant like that. Well, Neil Seri comes it through. Wow. I, I know it was in my own backyard and that had a lot of crowd behind me. It probably intimidated Salander a little bit, but it was just more or less who, who wanted it more. I wanted it. I don't think you want to win a fight or a title without going in and having a good fight. He's got the extension, he's a well, that Neil Seri with the old bar attempt. He's getting his hips through it, Salander's tapped. If I didn't get the armbar, it could have went another two rounds. Who would have known what way the fight would have went? But to come away with the cage warriors, their belt was brilliant. After the fight, <laughs> the body, the pain, everything just shut down, you know. It took six weeks before I even made it back down to the gym. I injured my legs, I couldn't run. Um, well, he ended my legs from kicking me, but it takes you that while where you have to catch up with these again, you know. It was a real good, I enjoyed the fight, but the only downside to it is everybody wants to kill you now, to take her off you, you know, so it's one of them, you have to go out and defend it now. You've won it, go out and defend it again. I first heard about Cage Warriors on MMA Junkie. You know, I'm real good friends with the guys on MMA Junkie. And then I saw a couple of their streams. I was, man, I was like, they're doing a pretty good show, you know? And then um, for a while, you know, I would hit grandma up, like, hey, man, like, let, let, me, let me beat up Neil, you know? Uh, that, you know, that's the title I want to get. Um, and, you know, it, for whatever reason, you know, it, things didn't come together. You know, they wanted me to fight in October, and I already had a fight lined up. But for whatever reason, this, line, this lined up perfectly, you know? And um, one thing that I do like about Cage Warriors is that, um, that they travel the country, they were just in Jordan, you know. I think they go to Russia, they go to Abu Dhabi, all that other stuff, you know. So I'll be able to see the world, you know. And I know that me being, you know, the loud American, you know, I'm not gonna get it, get, get any favor. So it's gonna force me to, to put people away, which ultimately, you know, it's gonna put more money in my pocket. And ultimately, you know, um, it doesn't matter if you're the best guy in the world, if people don't wanna see you fight then, you know, that's, that's pretty much what it is, you know, and I got to go back to, to where people want to see me fight, you know. He's getting his hips through it, so that just comes. 
Yeah, I saw his first title fight. Um, I wasn't impressed uh, the first time I saw it. I was like, uh, you know, uh, I was more impressed with, with his opponent, you know, than, than he tapped his opponent. Well, which, which he was, in my opinion, he was losing the first two rounds. Then he came back and, and won by submission on third, which says a lot, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't catch his chips in. So that's a lot about him as a fighter, you know, as, as a champion on top of that. Um, but I wasn't impressed when I first watched it. And then when they, they offered me to fight him, I said, yeah, then I watched the fight again. And I was more impressed within the second time than the first time. Um, I don't know, it was because I went from looking at it as a fighter and not a fan. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see how impressive he is when we fight. He follows me on Twitter, so I follow him. Then I'll make a, a, a comment and he favors it, which is kind of weird, you know? But uh, he seems like a nice, a, a nice bloke, I guess that's what they call it. As far as his fighting styles, you know, I know he does a good job of switching from, from conventional to, to orthodox. Um, I think um, he has decent boxing, you know, uh, throws hard, you know, he relies on his left hook a lot. I think I'm a little bit more of a technical striker. I think he throws harder, but I don't know if he hits harder. Um, I think my wrestling is better. Um, I know my jiu-jitsu my is better, whether it being on top or on bottom. Um, I think he'd probably tell you the same exact thing. I think, you know, the fight's gonna, gonna, gonna be won or lost uh, in, in, in the transitions, you know. If I can take him down, if he can take me down, if he can stop my takedown, if I can stop his takedown. Um, if I take him down, if I can pass right away, if he takes me down, can he, can he, can he not get, get submitted, you know? Um, but you know, everything changes when you're in there, you know? Sometimes the guys, they're, they, they, they don't look fast on tape, and they're, they're a lot faster in person, you know? Or sometimes they, don't, they, they, they look strong on, on, on tape, and they're not strong, you know? You train eight weeks, anywhere from, from two to four hours a day, you know? And you can be perfect those eight weeks, but all that matters is those 15, 15 to 25 minutes. Uh, I plan on showing up, um, you know, I'm sure Neil will. I, I don't think he wants to give up his belt that easily, you know, so we'll see. I mean, I've been telling people for years that I'm one of the best fighters in the world at 125, you know. Um, and me being Neil and getting that belt is going to solidify, you know, what I've been saying for a long time. He's, he's the first guy on my list, you know, on my way back to the top. Second place is, a, is, a, is a, a tough honor to have, and I'm not going to get second place, you know. For big four, you come up with um, useless Gomez in Newcastle. I'd say he's going to be really disappointed from getting let go from the UFC and try to get back to winning my ass, but he has to come in and face me. That's going to be going 100% to hold onto my belt. I already know that he has a really good game, a good jiu-jitsu game. He's sort of all-rounded, but I don't think he'd have the power to trouble me. I don't think he'd be able to take me punches. I think I'd more trouble him than he could on my feet. Now I'd say his jiu-jitsu seems to be a bit higher than me, but listen, it's a different story when you're getting punched in the face when it's on the ground, you know. It's a big, big fight for me, you know. I'm after winning the Cage Warriors title, there's a fella coming out, only have to be let go from the UFC, so it'll show where I am. Can I take it to the next level? Can I push on and leave these behind me? And I'm gonna show that I can. <laughs> Well, Andy, my coach, he has a look at the fight. He knows what he's good at, he knows what he's not. Look, to change my game to sue him, no. I've done that once and it cost me the fight. It cost me against uh, Shishenkov. That's what I've done. I was more interested in what he was going to do. And, I, and, and it sent me back. Instead of going out and put my game on him, I, I let him come on to me and I got caught. And he caught me noise, that was it. Move on from that. But no, I'm not changing that up here in this. I'm going out there to implement my game on him. He should be worried about my hands. Going for a lot of people have uh, taken notice that but I can't finish it on the ground, but I, I would rather try and knock you out or stand there and punch the face off you for 25 minutes if I have to. That's the type of fighter I am. I like to think that I'm an exciting fighter. I'm going out with my hands, my hands covering my chin and I'm going out swinging for the hills. I'm going to try and knock him out, take his head off or whatever way I can do, what, what, what I can do to stop him. 
But if he shoots, I'm going to try to defend takedowns. And that's what I do, you know, to stay, to stay on my feet, to try to catch him, to counter punch, or walk forward, to punch him. If he punches me in the face, I'm just going to punch him back twice, you know, it, it is what it is. I like going out and, and trying to take people's heads off, really. Don't just sit back and try to take me down and submit me and be happy with walking away with that submission. Let's go toe to toe and see, who, see who's the toughest in this game. I have a big heart, you're not going to break my heart in there, you know? do you know what I mean? I, I have fitness either way to bring me through them. If it's 15 minutes, if it's 25, I'm going to go through them. But I'm just going to keep marching forward and trying to take his head off constantly, you know? I ain't going to stop. Cage Wires 62 heads to the Metro Radio Arena in Newcastle on the 7th of December. For all tickets, viewing and fight card information, check out cagewires.com and get involved using hashtag CWFC62.